We acknowledge the fact that up this gulf, back in 1866, came a shipload of Afghan Kamalis who at that time were a mixture of people who took up contracts with Samuel Stuckey who went into Kandahar in Afghanistan up to the camel markets to find 121 camels that uh, Sir Thomas Elder paid for and brought to this country. They were the first Afghan Kamalis to come to this country after the three Afghans that were contracted to work on the Birkin Wheels expedition. We are here today to uh, reflect on the memories of the past, past memories of the early Af Afghan Kamalis who came to Australia to open up the outback with their camel trains. Where we stand today is where the unloading of the camels, Afghan camelmen, took place so they could begin the great works in the outback of Australia. My father came out here in 1897 with his father. He was only a young man when he came out because he had to do the cooking for the men and chase these camels. So, so all that sort of stuff. So anyhow, I am actually still first generation. I would like to say it's 144 years this month or next month that the Gans landed here at this wharf in Port Augusta, South Australia. And it's symbolic that Port Augusta now acknowledges our grandfathers. So on behalf of Port Augusta City Council and the community, uh, I welcome everybody here today to celebrate the launching and unveiling of the Afghan Camelias Memorial Panel. And on the 1st of January, 1866, Samuel Stuckey supervised the first shipment of camels on behalf of Thomas Elder. In that shipment, and I've always been curious about this, were 121 camels, 28 donkeys, 80 sheep, two deer, two Brahma cattle, a cow, <coughs> and a quagga, which is half zebra, half horse, and a number of grey partridges. This shipment was accompanied by 31 attendants, whom Stuckey described as Afghans. But let us spare a thought today of the men and the animals crammed together on a vessel which made the perilously long voyage from Karachi. And although these and later Camelias came from different ethnic groups and vastly different places such as Baluchistan, Kashmir, Sindh, Rajasthan, Egypt, Persia, Turkey and the Punjab, they were collectively known as Afghans. They left behind them, as you have already heard, their families and homes, many never ever to see them again. They came to a foreign country and faced enormous hardships while their skills were needed and mostly appreciated. They were largely shunned by the European communities. Indeed, racism and anger towards them was rife. But wherever the Camelias settled, they lived in the separate parts of the town. Many communities had three distinct sections, one for the Europeans, one for the Aboriginals, and the other for the Afghans. There was, of course, eventual assimilation between the Afghan and Aboriginal groups, but almost none between these groups and the Europeans. They tended to live in colonies, which they established at Port Augusta West, Beltana, Farina, Mari, Udnadatta and Lyndhurst. In 1884, the largest shipment of 293 camels arrived at a site near the Yacht Club. They had been imported by Fayez and Taig Mohammed and were accompanied then by another 56 cameleers. My great-grandmother, Sarah Ann Grantham, used to relate the story of that great event and the sight of the attendants in their white flowing robes. Camel teams became a fam familiar sight around this small port, which became the large, second largest port in the state 
and the Afghan Camelias became legend. I think in acknowledgement today of the arrival of the first Camelias, I would like to invite 31 male descendants to please stand in the line behind the memorial here before we proceed to do the uncutting. Oh. Right, Raz and Jamal, please reveal the memorial to us. Fantastic, yes. And what a great guard of honour to the memorial panel today.